ओके भाई बिस्मिल रहमान रहीम अस्सलाम वालेकुम थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आप लोग के टाइम देने का uh, मुझे पता है आप लोग बिजी होंगे थक भी गए होंगे uh, नींद भी आ रही होगी uh, लेकिन फिर भी यार uh, आज हमारा हमारी जो प्रेजेंटेशन है इट्स मोर लाइक डिस्कशन तो हम मैं कुछ जावा के बारे में कुछ लाइब्रेरीज के बारे में बात करूँगा उसके बाद हम सब बात करेंगे यानी कि जिसने जो लाइब्रेरीज यूज़ की हैं उसके यूज़ केसेज या उसके प्रोज एंड कॉन को डिस्कस कर लेंगे तो द टॉपिक ऑफ माय टॉक टुडे इज जावा स्क्रिप्ट यूटिलिटी लाइब्रेरीज इट इज इंस्पायर्ड बाय वन पॉडकास्ट व्हिच आई वाज लिसनिंग लास्ट वीक इट इज बाय बेस्ट बॉस उसका एक पॉडकास्ट है इट इज अवेलेबल ऑन सिंटेक्स डॉट एफ उसकी वेबसाइट है तो वहां से मैं वो देख रहा था आई वॉज लिसनिंग टू दैट पॉडकास्ट एंड आई गॉट दिस आइडिया टू शेयर विद ऑल ऑफ यू सो दैट इज माई प्रेजेंटेशन सी हाउ टू ओके सो so, uh, मेरे ख्याल में यूटिलिटी uh, लाइब्रेरी की डेफिनेशन मोर और लेस हर किसी को पता है यूटिलिटी लाइब्रेरी इज जस्ट अ सेट ऑफ फंक्शंस फॉर डूइंग सम टास्क एंड टू मेक योर लाइफ इजी तो कुछ ऐसे फंक्शंस होते हैं जो आप लिखेंगे जिनमें आपका वक्त ज़्यादा होगा वो किसी और ने लिखे हुए और आपसे अच्छे लिखे हुए तो आप रादर देन क्रिएटिंग द बीन अगेन यू जस्ट यूज इट तो देर आर सो मैनी यूटिलिटी लाइब्रेरीज विच पीपल हैव रिटर्न उसके ऊपर उनकी उन्होंने टेस्टिंग भी की हुई है उसके ऊपर उन्होंने जो है उसके ऊपर परफॉर्मेंस ऑप्टिमाइजेशन वगैरह सारे काम किए हुए बिकॉज ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर रीजन दो लाइब्रेरीज आर मच बेटर टू यूज रादर दैन क्रिएटिंग योर ओन समटाइम्स यू गेट टू मेक योर ओन फंक्शन एज वेल जो आप हेल्पर फंक्शन बनाते हैं अपने कोर्ट के अंदर लेकिन मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम जो आपके टास्क होते हैं उसमें जो है वो आप यूटिलिटी लाइब्रेरीज को यूज कर सकते हैं ठीक है तो इट्स जस्ट अ सेट ऑफ फंक्शंस जो कॉमन टास्क आपके होते हैं उसको करने के लिए तो हम अपने टॉक का जो वे है वो ये रखेंगे कि हम आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट फ्यू फेमस लाइब्रेरीज दीज डेज मोस्ट ऑफ देम यू नो अबाउट आफ्टर द टॉक यू गाइस कैन आल्सो कंट्रीब्यूट अबाउट एनी लाइब्रेरी विच यू हैव यूज रिसेंटली एंड यू वॉन्ट डिस्कस अबाउट सो वन ऑफ द मोस्ट लाइक talked about the most famous libraries these days is uh, not these days just a few months back used to be underscore so people used to use underscore for almost everything which they were doing with data so if you are playing with arrays objects strings functions whatever any kind of data uh, or uske liye aapko helper functions ki zarurat hai to aap use karte the uske liye underscore js अंडर स्कोर जी एस आपको अवेलेबल है नोट के ऊपर भी ब्राउजर के ऊपर भी तो वो इनकी ए पी आई दोनों के ऊपर अवेलेबल है उसके बाद जो है वो आप जो है वो अंडर स्कोर के डिफरेंट फंक्शन डिफरेंट फंक्शन आप यूज कर सकते हैं रिक्वायर करने का तरीका आसान सा है आप लाइब्रेरी को रिक्वायर करें उसमें आप हंड्रेड ऑफ फंक्शन आर अवेलेबल अंडर स्कोर डॉट जी एस के ऊपर नो अबाउट अंडर स्कोर वट इज अंडर स्कोर The next level of underscore, which uh, is available today, is like one of the most famous libraries of JavaScript these days. One of the most famous utility libraries is Lodash. Uh, Lodash has a lot of built-in functions for manipulating with data, all kinds of data. Uh, and uh, you have like you name it, and they have it. The good part about using lodash is you can require separate modules as well you don't need to require the whole library if you just want to use couple of functions so you can actually just require few uh, modules jiske aapko functions ki zarurat hai and actually aapka bundle size or performance optimization wale ke liye bhi fir aapko help out karti hai which underscore by the way was not is not doing so far so that is why we use lodash a uh, lot of methods for arrays objects strings a uh, functions तो जब भी आप कहीं फंस रहे हो तो रादर देन कि आप उस पर यू वेस्ट योर ओन टाइम जस्ट लुक आउट इफ दे हैव एनी मेथड जस्ट कॉपी इट इम्प्लीमेंटेड यूजिंग देयर लाइब्रेरी तो वी हैव डिस्कस अंडर स्कोर एंड लोड एस सो फॉर द अनदर थिंग विच इज वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एंड विच इज वेरी बोरिंग एंड एट टाइम्स गेट ऑन योर नर्व इज प्लेइंग विद डेट्स एंड टाइम्स तो वन ऑफ द लाइब्रेरीज विच इज वेरी फेमस इज मोमेंट तो मोमेंट इज द लाइब्रेरी फॉर मैनिपुलेशन विद टाइम एंड डेट्स गुड पार्ट अबाउट मोमेंट इज 
it gives you a lot of functions in a way that you are talking in English. For example, let's see a couple of examples. So you can actually just get the relative time as well from moment. So for example, if I have written a blog like one minute ago, it will tell, it will tell me that this blog was written one minute ago. Um, and then if it, it's been like one week, it will say one week ago rather than giving me the whole minutes in that particular amount of time. So it, it gives you the relative time. Uh, another good feature about uh, Moment is that it gives you a lot of formats for, that, for dates. So you don't need to create your own regex and everything. It, it, you just can use their formatting. Uh, you can do a lot of manipulation with date, like you can get the start of the date, how many hours are left at the end of today, or how many hours has it been since the start of this day, etc., etc. You can just you know play with a Moment, and it's amazing, amazing library. Uh, with this, the problem was that the underscore with the bundle size kept on increasing and they did not provide the modular functionality even after common JS and ESX modules. So to, to cater that, uh, there is this guy which wrote this data functions, data FNS library. So it is also, uh, it is also moment, but it is the low dash of moment. Like it gives you the modular functions about uh, JavaScript, dates, times, etc, etc. You can actually just uh, require those modules which you require, which you actually need, and just play with them rather than importing your whole library and using that. So you can see that it is also very easy. Uh, you can also get relative time, you can format your dates uh, as per your need, uh, etc, etc. You can play with time, you can do addition, subtraction uh, with time and dates, etc. So this is also a very handy, very useful library. I personally have used Moment, I have not used Date FNS so far, uh, so I was using Moment uh, in my previous company as well, uh, so that served well, uh, that served a lot of cases like uh, time zone issues and all that stuff as well. So, but I have, I'm yet to see this Date FNS in working and see how it goes. But it's, it seems promising, there are a lot of contributions on GitHub, there are lots of stars, so many people are talking about it. And so it, it, it seems to it, it seems like it looks like that at some point in time moment would be you know moment would not be used as much as the data FNS would be used. So uh, until and if and only moment comes up with the modular functionality and they reinvent themselves. Uh, another library which is very interesting is uh, after ESX is the fetch API, which is in native in the browser. So what we used to do before is uh, to, to do any API request if you are working with plain JavaScript or jQuery, $.get or $http, etc. Uh, what Fetch API has done, it has made the, the interface for requesting the resources very easy. Uh, it is available um, natively in JavaScript now uh, and it, the syntax is plain. Uh, what you do is just uh, uh, you have this method called fetch, you give the URL address, you get the response. I'm using a sync await over here, so once you get the response, you just parse it through JSON uh, and you get the response data. So this is very handy API now. You can also do post, port, delete request, you can also do cross domain, cross origin request as well using fetch API. So it's amazing, you must check it. Uh, if you are working with JavaScript and not using the, the libraries of Angular, etc. So if you're just playing using plain JavaScript, try to get it done in Fetch API. So uh, the problem with Fetch API was uh, this uh, middle thing, like, uh, and a lot of more stuff. Like middle thing is that once you get the response, you have to parse it through JSON function. Um, um, another thing was if you are making a post request, you have to add all these methods over here as well. Like the, the header, you have to set the headers, you have to tell them that this is this method is post, etc. Another problem was uh, with the error handling of Fetch API. So there were like few problems. Uh, even though this, this API is amazing, this it, this, it helps a lot. You don't have, you don't have to use uh, jQuery just for the sake of uh, fetching the data, but it had some problems. So to, to, to solve these problems, there is this API, which is called Axios. Uh, this is, Axios is, uh, uh, will be, one of the most famous libraries until and unless JavaScript implements something like that in, in, in their domain, in their native functionality. So it is also a promise-based HTTP client, just like Fetch API. Uh, 
for the browser and Node.js as well. So what you do basically, जो आपका सारा code था, it just gets into this URL. So what do you do is exios.get. You just give the URL. It can be cross origin or URL as well, and you will get the response. You don't even have to parse if you are dealing with JSON data. It will parse automatically. Uh, to do the post request, you do this. Uh, you can do port, port delete, etc. You can also uh, manipulate the request. I mean, you can, uh, if you want to add few data as well, or if you want to add some request and headers. But it, for the basic thing, this is this is very simple. This is very minimalistic, uh, and this looks very nice. And especially if you are using the ES6 syntax and you, you are using async await, etc. So this makes your code very uh, clean. Uh, and uh, and very you know, easy to read and easy to manipulate. One good thing about Axios is the error handling, which uh, in Fetch API was uh, is, is is not as good. So the the errors are kept are caught through the catch block in this Axios. In Fetch API, the catch block does not uh, necessarily handle all kind of errors, but Axios does. So uh, one of the good APIs you should check it uh, if you are dealing with HTTP requests in your uh, applications, which you surely are. Uh, I have used Axios with React. I was making one application on React. So in that application, I had to query data from Splash API. Splash is the another API for images, open source images. So I created a search engine for the Splash API for Splash images. So I created a React application, and in that I use Axios for handling all my HTTP requests. So this is nice. Uh, you should check it. Um, another one is uh, this uh, very interesting and very you know amazing library which is called Faker. Uh, what Faker does is actually it generates it does nothing but generates a lot of fake data for you. So for example, if you want to make hundred thousand accounts, you don't have to do it like, and you want to have them randomly. Uh, so you can just exactly just use this uh, API and it will create a lot of fake, random, real data for you. So, for example, what I did is I, I just created 1,000 emails here. So it just gives me 1,000 real emails, uh, and I can just play with them. And there are lots and lots of data options available in this library. You can get cards, you can get images, you can get avatars, you can get phone numbers, passwords, emails, names, etc., etc. So this is one good library for testing purposes. Yes. So you can get a lot of fake data. Uh, you can get avatars. Uh, and you can get all sorts of things which you which you can which you may require for uh, testing purposes. So must check out this library. Um, I found it very easy and very nice, and the response time is also very good. So uh, very performance optimized. Another API is uh, if you guys have you I mean you must have used local storage in so many of your projects. I use local storage in my previous company a lot uh, for maintaining a lot of things. Uh, so I, I used to use uh, cross storage, uh, the local storage a lot. What cross storage does is, for example, you have two websites. For example, you have you you are a teacher and you have two course websites, and you want to manage local storage for both of them. So rather than implementing local storage separately, if you want few variables to be used on both the websites, what you can do is you can use cross storage. It creates local storage for cross domain. Uh, cross application and cross web pages. So you can create a local storage object which you can use on multiple windows and multiple objects and multiple uh, web pages as well. So how you do it is <laughs> is actually very easy. So what you do is just you require this library and you uh, initialize it and you uh, I just gave the basic functionality over here. You can actually define the name of variables etc. So what does it do is it it, uh, it marks uh, it gives permissions for different domains that if the website is from this domain, allow just get request, allow just uh, get object from the local storage. Otherwise, you can set for a few websites, you can just uh, set, delete, and get, etc. So basically, you can do as whatever you can do with local storage, but now with multiple domains, with uh, cross origin, with multiple web pages, uh, you can use the same local storage object. So how it is handling security? Actually, it, it is not handling. It, it is not meant for handling security. For example, you actually want to use local storage for two 
browsers. So uh, I think this, we can't do this one browser data uh, in each browser data. So it is limited to particular browsers or something. No, actually, what it, what it does is, what it does is basically, uh, it, it, it basically creates a local storage for you, right? For example, you have two websites or you have two applications running. What do you want is, कि जब मेरा एक वेबसाइट खुले या दोनों वेबसाइट्स खुले तो मैं उनके बीच में लोकल स्टोरेज को मैनेज कर सकूं अब मैं खुद ये चाह रहा हूं कि एक वेबसाइट दूसरी वेबसाइट के लोकल स्टोरेज यूज कर ले मतलब इसमें सिक्योरिटी का इशू तब आएगा ना व्हेन आई डोंट वांट एनी अदर वेबसाइट टू यूज माय लोकल स्टोरेज और नॉट एवरी आई एग्री आई एग्री बट दिस लोकल स्टोरेज ऑब्जेक्ट इज नॉट एक्सेसिबल बाय एवरी वेबसाइट नो ओनली सिलेक्टेड वंस व्हिच आई गिव द परमिशन टू आई विल डिफाइन द परमिशन फेसबुक फेसबुक देखो मैं आपकी बात समझ रहा हूँ आप जो कह रहे हैं ना आई एग्री वॉट यू आर सेंग इज के इट हैपन्स दैट आपकी मल्टीपल एप्लीकेशन के बीच में आप रिसोर्स शेयरिंग भी तो करते हो ना सीधे तो कैसे कर लो इन दोनों को कम्युनिकेशन के पता है कि ये हमारे कैसे आप कर ये, ये, तो कर ये आप डिफाइन करते हैं जब आप अपनी लोकल स्टोरेज को बनाते हैं ठीक है आप किसी एक जगह पे लोकल स्टोरेज को बनाते हैं और उसमें आप बता देते हैं कि मेरे पास अगर और नहीं उसको आप ये बता देते हैं ना देखो जो बेसिकली लोकल स्टोरेज बनती है वो किस वो ब्राउजर के अंदर बनती है वो ब्राउजर पर इम्प्लीमेंट होती है तो ब्राउजर को आपने बता दिया कि भाई ये लोकल स्टोरेज का ऑब्जेक्ट है ये इस ओरिजिन पे भी जाएगा और इस ओरिजिन पे भी जाएगा सही है तो मैं फॉर एग्जांपल मेरी एक ऐप है एबीसी डॉट कॉम और एक्स वाई जेड मैंने ब्राउजर को बता दिया कि दिस लोकल स्टोरेज ऑब्जेक्ट कैन बी एक्सेस बाई एबी सी एस वेल एंड एक्स वाई जी एस वेल पहले यूजली ये होता है कि वो सिर्फ एक लोकल स्टोरेज का ऑब्जेक्ट एक ही को एक्सेस पर होता है तो ये सारे ब्राउजर सपोर्ट करते हैं यार अब ये आई दिस इज वॉट आई टू सी Okay, if it uh, if it is acceptable, but it's been there for long time and it's very famous. So I am sure that this is uh, available in most of the browsers. But I will check it, and you are right. I will have to check it. So that's all from our side. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, if you have any other library in your mind or any other comment, you can just uh, discuss with uh, us. So it will be very beneficial for all of us. Thank you so much. मैं बस जेकेरी का बोलना चाह रहा हूँ क्या आपने जेकेरी दूसरी कर दी थी नहीं जेकेरी सी कॉस्ट कॉस्ट